Yeah, I had an interesting night dream. Oh boy, here we go. Competition problems. Ooh, let's go through it and see how fast we can get through it and how intelligently and logically Ralph can get through this. I'm a, I, it's just a, it's a, look at this. Over six billion, seven billion, there's lots of people on the planet. Okay, we have a Wi Fi interconnected network run by supercomputers and different kinds of uh, networks and stuff like that. So when you're trying to plug into the quote unquote matrix, it's it's pretty uh, hard. And if you're like Neo trying to run through it and try to help explain things to people, say, here's what's going on, and then they're all pissed. You're not that smart. I don't know. I mean, just right before I was sitting here using the bathroom and we're talking about evolution, and remember uh, Steve, I love Steve Hawking, brilliant man. Uh, he sat there and said that evolution, you know, that we've also, and someone else I think might have said it too, but Steve might have helped, you know, with the whole thing about, you know, we've evolved in a really piss poor way, and most of our inefficient psychopaths, stupid ass, the, 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 the ones that shouldn't have evolved have evolved because we're inefficient. And it's like, well, then, yeah, let's take Steve out, Steve Hawking outside and let him die. <laughs> why he shouldn't have evolved uh, efficiently in an actual evolution type state you're talking about. Well, that's not the type of, well, then what type of evolution are we talking about? Queens, kings, drones, yeah, you're talking to your elitist, your, your, your royalty, your this and that. I'm royalty, so I would like most of you dead because you're all pissing me off and you're destroying your planet. So, kill them. <laughs> no, why? Because then I'd be the most inefficient leader. I'm not compassionate. I'm not intelligent. I'm not loving. I don't teach well. I mean, I suck. <laughs> Kill me. No, why? Because I'm nothing like that. <laughs> so help me. Help me here. Um, we evolve in that kind of fashion. Um, there's ways to um, manage our population in an intelligent manner. Uh, Muhammad taught me about it. You, know, you can't have any more wives than you can afford, and you can't have any more children than you can afford. So uh, you're Updike's rabbit. God, this is so good. Thanks, Isaac. Um, Updike's rabbit. Updike's uh, rabbit. Rat, they uh, overpopulate at a. This is a molecular transfiguratory relative collective group connective. So they, a lot of them, especially like in the Mormon Church and, and uh, a lot of uh, Muslim sects and everything like that, where there's uh, the Mormons are strongly connected to the Muslims and the Muslims are being mass eradicated for their oil and then try to put back in the soil so they can replenish the oil. I mean, that's really disturbing to the Mormons. The Mormons are really strongly connected to the Muslims. They have very similar beliefs. They're very conservative, what we would call conservative in value. Um, and then there's a lot of very good Mormons, a lot of very good Muslims being murdered, and then they're using the extremist propaganda on both ends. And they, a lot of them do overproduce at a rapid rate. Because like a fun bex rabbit, it's like they're trying to get rid of us, and so they're <laughs> we have to stay alive, you know. And it's it's just a survival instinct. So they're reproducing too many and too rapidly, and it's splicing them. And then when they're spli and they're splicing me, and Andrew talked about this yesterday at the lot. Thanks for whoever the mouthpiece was, but uh, the computer knows who the mouthpiece was who was using Andrew for the mouthpiece. So if you're doing this to avoid look stupid, it's it's you're looking stupid or. <laughs> so the computer just wants you to know, and the computer access systems that are following the trail of what's going on, that anybody who's trying to avoid looking stupid, not talking to Ralph publicly, looks stupider in the future. Understood? So it's a smile for my friends and cry later. Okay. It's an, okay. Just so you know, we'll get through this. We'll get through this. There's, there's no alternative. We either get, it's like me. Ralph, you're successful or die trying. Yeah, you guys too. You're successful or die trying. Kill the planet. I don't want to. I like it here. It's a good option. What's the other option? Uh, part of a raging <laughs> or a floating in the dark abyss of space. What do you? I'll take planet Earth for the time being for for your, for, for for free. Thanks, Alex. Okay. What do you want to do? I'd like to start saving the planet, uh, make it be help make it a better place to live, and make love to a gorgeous woman. Necessarily in that order, but they, they all work. It all works together. So, yeah, and he told me this morning, he's like, now, how do you know it's not going well? Well, I'm not a public figure. Um, once I become a public figure, it'll start all working in a, in a, in a very good, uh, logical, intelligent suit again. So uh, I'll know when to settle down, when to get in shape, and when to start looking and focusing on a relationship and stuff like that when I become a public figure. And that's that's when I will. That's when I'll ease up and I'll, When you relax, when I become a public figure. You'll be relaxed when you're a public figure. You know how stressful it is to be a public figure? Not with me. No. Well, one, I'm recluse. I'm used to it. 
uh, too. I'm used to hanging out with, you know, and it's all, hey, dude, you're the most, I'm the most up, man. Come on in. It's all right, man. What the hell is going on? It's all good. All right. <laughs> you're sure that I get it. I'm the Messiah. Me, almighty, powerful, make lamp fly across the room, hit you in the head. No. I'm working on it. I'd love to hit Seth MacFarlane with a lamp in the head with most telekinesis. I'd be too fun. Oh, everybody would love it. Do it again. Hit McFarlane again. Hit hit Dawkins. Oh, come on. No, hit all the people we don't like. Okay, everyone. No, he loves Jesus. No, he doesn't. He sells them. <laughs> Stop selling me. You got any more lamps? No, we don't have a lamp. Okay, I'm going to use the ashtray and the coffee table. The coffee table. The coffee table's next. <laughs> Just kidding. It's giving me a headache. Stop it, guys. I don't want to do it. I'd love to do it. How about this? How about we take the skin so soft satin talc and we bounce off their heads with the top open? Is it? <laughs> yeah. Sound like fun? I'm kidding. Guys, knock it off. Shut up. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's old Andy and Shane and, and Justin are like, no, you're getting more our speed. This is more fun. You're all depressing and, and all. The, I'm not depressing. No, you guys have to understand. I had a basketball dream last night. I was trying to play basketball, went through all the same shit again, going through all the same shit. I was talking to people again, and, you know, they're expressing me through their mouthpieces. No, you have opportunity that people are denying you. Bullshit. <laughs> That's like Keith going to the Deer Valley basketball game. He's going, dude, why aren't you on the team? Well, all the kids got together, and the coach, you know, decided, yeah. <laughs> coach changed my shot, told me I was fundamentally wrong, was going to fix me and make me into a better player. All the guys on the team would watch me at the park and were like, oh, fuck, if he plays, we, he's going to be the star, and we're not going to, yeah, be the studs on campus, so we got to get him kicked off. So, yeah, so, yeah, no, he can't play. Are you kidding? If he plays, everybody will talk about him, and I want him to talk about me. Seriously, yeah. I had that when I was married too, and I love Patrick's mom. She, I died to her, you know. But we were—I had a picture that I drew freehand of, of Bob Marley because I love Bob Marley, and it was the legend picture, the one, the painting I have. And yeah, I saw those pictures, and somebody was explaining to me this morning. It's like you, yeah, I was, yeah, we made those cards in anywhere from like second to third grade, most likely second, stuff like that. Like, have you seen most? I've seen most first and second grade people's drawings. Yeah. They're rudimentary, almost stick figures. <laughs> yeah, dude, you were darn. <laughs> I mean, that's almost a perfect rendition of a Clark Kent with glasses with Superman for, you know, that. that's a seven-year-old kid. Yeah, with muscles and the face. Well, I was, I was cheating. I was looking at a picture of, of Superman. <laughs> I had the curl on the top of the hair and his lips. And, well, I was just copying it verbatim off of what the, the artist had drawn. <laughs> I know, Ralph Earl, that's not normal for most uh, seven-year-olds to be able to do. Okay, do you understand? <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah, and then the way I draw, well, I watched my dad do things, and I would do some of the things similar with his eyes and the lips and the shapes. and the, Yeah, you, yeah, that's not normal for most seven-year-olds, Ralph. <laughs> okay, I, I get that. And then when you're teaching and you're going to classes and your teacher, your art history teacher who adores Pablo Picasso and says that art picture that he did when he was 17, she says, this isn't typical for most 17-year-olds to be this good. I was like, I don't know. I was that good at 12. <laughs> My dad, okay, never mind. So I'm sitting there watching it. She goes on and on and on. And then she talks about Gertie Stein and Brock and all the people he went and got around with and borrowed ideas from and connected to and borrowed ideas from and then became the Picasso style. It's like, my man's a fucking con artist. And she's like, and you're like, yeah. <laughs> you're sitting there analyzing all this. She's telling the stories about this great histories of all these artists and stuff. And you're figuring them out. I figured out Deschamps when he, yeah, he was, yeah. They, they, uh, Picasso and a lot of those guys had started out a, a thing, a con artist tree for art because uh, the photograph and the, and the print had came in and the jobs for artists were shrinking so they were having to make or reinvent art so artists could have jobs because they were being uh, mechanized out <laughs> so I'm sitting there going no nah, they're just doing this and she's like no it's a brilliant business it's disessentialism and dissembling as like no they're just inventing new art so they can become artists and do stuff that uh, Essentially, you can't reproduce with a camera or a print, but you can reproduce a Picasso and a, and a Jackson Pollock with a print, obviously. So they're trying to find something else to express that only we can do this and not the 
camera or the mechanized thing. Oh, that makes sense. So you, they're trying to find a place in the world to, yeah. And then the Andy War, yeah, and so I'm just explaining it to her. It's like, no, this is just a reaction to mechanization. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm a, Yeah, I, I was pretty intelligent. Yeah, it's funny. I know I do this to a lot of poor people. It's funny. And then they win science classes. And it's, don't let him back in the science class. He's no longer bored. He's in college. He's finding some interest in it. Don't let him around these science teachers and, 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 and make it difficult for him. Give him terrible teachers so he's totally bored again and wants out of this class. Yeah, they did that to me too. And so they, they've done this to me all the time. Let's make his relationships horrible so he can, you know, let's all screw his wife. <laughs> Say we did it better. <laughs> oh yeah, that, they, they didn't like the reputation at PRC and where else did I? Oh, well, Law started it out with my, uh, well, actually it was Raquel. Raquel, she came back and she wanted to, but she couldn't because her, her mom didn't want her dating a white guy and having the half-white black kids that got ostracized in society, which is very loving, actually. My dad was the same way. Raquel's mom is not a bitch. She's a really neat lady. I love her, but she just didn't want the kid to be put through hell. And Patrick was went through a lot of hell being tan. You're not black. You're not white. You're, yeah, societal. It's hard being, being him. Uh, he needed both parents together to help him through, and his mom was gay. So they were, that was really sweet, too. But it was partly engineered and partly controlled, but he's not a ma manipulated uh, King Solomon. He's a gift to God, King Solomon. They told me to do it. He's tough. He can take it. Damn. I thought I made his life miserable, but it wasn't me. It, it was them that manipulate the society and make it suck and keep our good teachers on the sidelines. So <laughs> I was getting to the point with art stuff, and I'm sorry, I'm just kind of abstract, but it's weaving through me this morning because we're trying to explain. I had that picture of Bob Marley. Stephanie got bored at home, and I had some pastels and other things and uh, markers and other art supplies, and she had art supplies, and she grabbed my, she was like, look at this. She goes, oh, let me look at that. She goes, can I fix it? And I was like, oh, yeah, sure, man, do whatever you want with it. And so, I got home and she had colored it and, and shaded it and made it pop. You know, and I was like, "Wow, this is cool!" So I went and showed Brian. I'm like, "Brian, yeah, you know that Bob Marley picture? You're like, uh, yeah. Look what Steffi did to him. Oh, dude, you guys need to you guys do your own comic books. Yeah, no, do your own comic books. Da, da, da. You guys, you do the original drawing. She pops it and then shows about it, and then you guys become famous. And show you all this stuff. You start talking about all these art things we could do together." And I sit there and I say, that's cool. Just, okay, uh, Steffi, get some ideas. I'll start doing this. Brian wanted to get, Brian goes, I got some ideas. for I'll say, all right, I'll draw them out. You color and pop them, and then he'll use his story. To, we'll become famous. That sounds like a plan. We'll sell comic books. That's all right. We'll do that. <laughs> well, definitely good stories, and I can help with stories, obviously. But, <laughs> and, then, and I went back, and he's like, nah. and he's like, okay, do you want to do it? It'll be fun. We can just give it a try. No, nah, she won't do it. It's like, why? Well, because it's not hers. What? Yeah. I don't get it, Brian. I don't get it either. She 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 doesn't even want me to keep that. She tried to get rid of that picture of mine. I'm like, no, it's my picture of Bob Marley. Oh, Punchy's got it now. <laughs> it's like, I give it to Punchy. But it was all like, what? She's all like, yeah. He goes, she wants it just to be hers exclusively. And so, yeah, no, it's, that wasn't just hers. It was mine. I drew it. She just colored it. And like, you're serious? It's like, yeah, no. I, I drew the original picture, and then she colored it so it's not hers so it was better than some of the stuff that she did and because you, you were saying you're like man that's awesome you guys are a great team but it looked better than some of her drawings and she got offered a job to work at sports illustrated when she was in after she, at al collins way thing stuff like that so but it was better and so she was she was she's jealous she thought that i drew the the structure better, the original structure, and then she just built off of it. So she was jealous of it because she was she had her thing from Al Collins and she had had a drop offer to go to Sports Illustrated to be an artist, and she was jealous. She thought I might be as good as her at art. <laughs> like fuck. I mean, I didn't. She never said this, but I was telling Brian, yeah, that's what's going on. Do you? I don't give a fuck. I think it'd just be cool. I think it's cool what she did with my painting, and she helped me. So now that I'm drawing, I'm like, thank you. You told me some different things in shading that I didn't have information through. So she got it all Collins. Appreciate it. And she's like, fuck. I just made him a better artist. <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> God. It's like when I had that talk with David Rockefeller about that Jesse Owens movie, and this is based on a true story too. There was a Mexican long jumper, 
and he was jumping, and he watched Jesse Owens jump, and Jesse Owens could just go 27 feet. And the other guy's like doing 22 feet. He qualified. You know, he was a Mexican long jumper. And the German guy was close to Jesse, but about a foot and a half behind him. Um, the Mexican jumper goes, God, you're amazing. Ken's up and talks to him. Jesse goes, well, yeah, oh, thanks. You know, he goes, is there any advice you can give me? Oh, I don't know. Let's see you jump. <laughs> he does it, and he's like, oh, my God. You know, the guy had lots of really bad coaching. You know, not really bad coaching. He was just raw. He didn't really have anybody that did. And so Jesse looks at him and goes, do this, do that, and boom, 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 boom. And then, and then sometimes he goes, well, you're always afraid of doing this. He goes, what I want you to do then of, of, of faulting you uh, take a spot about uh, you're doing that and it's making you stutter step and so I used to do that too uh, sometimes I got real good now where I hit it right on and I get it he goes but stop and hit it like maybe six pick a place six inches in front of it and start jumping from there and just let yourself go mm -hmm. don't let the making sure you're, you're looking down and watching where you're thing and you don't do that just Pick a spot in your mind, look at it, see it before you get there where you're going to jump and pick the earlier spot so you don't fault all the time because that was his problem. And he goes, and then just go. He goes, with the full speed, you're going to add an extra foot or so on, so it's going to be the six inches you lose, you're going to gain in about a foot and a half, so just do it. So he starts jumping close to 24 and a half feet or whatever stuff, so he's actually, he qualifies. He gets to jump in the Olympics where he wouldn't have even got past the qualifying rounds. He gets to get in the finals and everything. And he's all excited and he thinks Jesse Owens and the German guy's watching and goes, What are you doing? It's like what he could you just he's jumping like almost two feet more. It's like, yeah. What if he gets better and he keeps trying and he beats you? Jesse was like, I never thought about that. <laughs> and I walks off, you know, oh well, okay. If he's better than me and he beats me, then okay. It wasn't so much that he was so confident. It wasn't like Jesse just didn't really give a fuck. He was going to win the 100 and the 200 <laughs> and the 4 by 100 meter. Like, oh, if I lose a long jump, oh, I'll get over it. <laughs> He's pretty much that way, too, and I'm that way, too. If the other guy beats you, you know, if he was better than me, then, well, he had bad coaching, you know. And then so, uh, if he, what if he beats you? That's cool. Um, it gives me somebody to run up. I get the silver. <laughs> okay. Hey, you can't beat me. And <laughs> if he beats me, I get the silver. He gets the gold. It's cool. He's a good guy. I like him. I'm all right with that. I'll get some sleep. Uh, how about you? You gave away the gold medal. No, he earned it. He's better than me. What? Yeah. So if I teach him how to do it the same way I'm doing it, and he beats me, he's better than me. He earned the gold medal. I didn't give it to him. If he's having bad coaching and not doing it right, then I cheated to win the gold because I'm sitting there watching him and saying, oh, dude, you could do this and you'd jump better. So you'd, you'd, give, you'd have a good night's sleep because he could beat you, but he's screwing up. And you could teach him to do better. What kind of human being are you? Shit. <laughs> yeah. See, I, God, I love Jesse Owens. I see why Mr. Uh, Rockefeller likes him so much. Um, yeah, he's a beautiful human being. Oh, and they're inefficient. They do that. Do, do, do. There's no real gold medal, silver medal. It's just learning to jump farther, watching people do what they do and enjoying it. Yeah, we, we don't really have to pay for money or whoever gets the award or the Super Bowl or the... Yeah, we could do it and we still do it because it's fun. But, uh, hey, you know, I told you about that when the Suns uh, lost the championship, man. Everybody had Phoenix Sun stuff all over town. And... It was a cool ride. I mean, we were like, it was the Suns, and they were going further in the championship. And oh, it was great, man. They went to the and they went to the NBA Finals again since first time since back in the day when they lost to the Celtics. I remember West Paul when they won that triple overtime in Chicago. This time the good guys won. But the thing about it is, is uh, <laughs> you played for the Celtics the year before. <laughs> <laughs> they were the bad guys. <laughs> well, of course, they didn't play them that much, so of course the Suns were the good guys. You got to. <laughs> yeah, he really must have hated the Celtics. <laughs> played for the Celtics and didn't play. Went to the Suns and almost beat them in the championship. So, yeah, this time the good guys won. Um, uh, <laughs> it was cool. But, uh, yeah, it was a good game. It was one of the best games in NBA history, uh, in finals history. Um, the, the triple overtime in Chicago. Uh, the one with my Magic, uh, Michael tried to guard uh, Kevin Johnson out on the perimeter. <laughs> Hold on. Old Phil Jackson had to pull him in. You still want to guard uh, 
Kevin out on the perimeter? No, I'll, uh, we'll let BJ do it. <laughs> okay, cool. Sounds like a plan. All right, yeah, it's harder than it looks, isn't it? Yeah. He, he, they lost the game, but they won the series. Uh, Jackson taught him a lesson. Jackson's a good coach. I like Phil Jackson a lot. I was watching it on the TV watching and watching the interaction between them and going, yeah, he's, and Michael was trying to guard Kevin. Kevin was going off. <laughs> Kevin was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like a deer in the headlights, and Kevin was like, try to guard me here 25 feet from the basket, and I'm going to break you off on the dribble. And Michael was like, I can guard, can't guard you. No. What's the, you're hard to guard. Shit. You're like, you're not? Do I try to guard your ass in the post? <laughs> Fuck no! You'll eat me alive. <laughs> yeah, even if yeah, you front, even if I get behind you, you're still gonna just boom. You're gonna fuck me up, just like Gerald Williams would have done to me. But I would have been able to at least have some confidence because I would have stopped him a few more times than old stupid Chorizo having me front a, a five a five foot ten kid fronting a six foot five kid. <laughs> front him? No, you can only front him. What? How am I gonna guard him fronting him? He's seven inches taller than me. That's just fucking stupid. All they have to do is lob it over. I know. I'm trying to destroy your confidence. I think you're arrogant. I know you are. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, it's weird, man. We're going to go to the next one. This is really interesting. Um, you guys are going to have to grow up real quick. We need this. All right? Blessings and peace. This is to the people in charge that and can use you and use the computer management systems. I'm interfacing through the computer systems. We are in a matrix, Sam, but it's, it's different. It's a, it's a, it's a Wi-Fi network. Um, that's what's confusing everybody about are we really here because they have lack of control in their own lives. They have alternate universes that are possibilities that they pick up on and stuff. The matrix is real, but it's a, it's a, it's a network that's of alternate universes and possibilities because we're under such intense mind control mechanisms. Okay, got it, got it, Sam? I'm Neo, bitch. I love you, too. You can kneel with me, Sam. Let's do some kneeling. It'll be fun, all right? I'll be back. Blessings and peace.